Welcome to the Omni Select tutorials. In this section, we're going to cover the site module. This module should be the first you set up, since all other modules depend on the settings that are in this site module. So this is the communication center screen that we that we're looking at right now, and it, it displays when you start the select program. And once devices are added to the system, they'll show up here with their current alarm message status. Now this is all covered in more detail in another tutorial. But we, I'll quickly point out the access to all the user manuals is right here at the question mark. Here we've got a list of all the, manu all the manuals. Uh, so if you need any more details on anything as we're going through, then you can check that out. We'll start out by logging in, and we'll use the default username and password of sysadmin and omniadmin. So on the left, we see all the currently installed software modules. And up above, we see three choices, settings, configuration, and reports. Now, these will display unique information for the module that you select on the left. So what we'll start out with is uh, configuration and site as it stands right now. So here in the site information section, enter the site name, the address, and the contact information. Uh, under site identification. This information is used in the reports to identify what site the report is for. The version information, it contains the software serial and version numbers. This information is useful during troubleshooting and your dealer or phase on will use it to identify what features are installed and if there's any outstanding bug fixes. Now the outdoor temperature, now if you're using the phase on communication hub or the PCH, and have an outdoor temperature probe installed in it, then you'll want to check that box. The electrical frequency, you'll want to choose that appropriate for your country, either 60 hertz or 50 hertz. And the test bench select button. Uh, the test bench select is a troubleshooting tool for communications, which we're not going to cover under this tutorial. Uh, it's covered under another one. Under units of measure, we've got imperial and metric units, so choose the appropriate units for your site. Under buildings, the select system organizes all the devices into virtual buildings or groups of devices. Now each device, like a power block or a water monitor or hog sorter, they must be contained in a building. So here's an example. Right here we've got one of five buildings in the site and it has a water monitor and it has a power block so each with its equipment connected to it so it's a uh, it's a building with two devices in it now when adding buildings to on your select you may choose to match the physical buildings you are controlling or perhaps make a building for a group of rooms that are similar All right now so here's a few examples of how you can structure your buildings first example is one barn equals one building. So this is one is pretty straightforward. Add a building for each physical barn that you have on the site. Each building will probably have more than one room, as seen in this diagram, where there are two rooms in each building, each with a sorter. Now this could easily be a power block or any other device. Okay, then the second example is the several barns equals one building. This diagram shows eight physical barns, but they've been grouped into four buildings within OmniSelect. They're grouped like this based on location in the site. You know, building one northwest and northeast. You know, per perhaps you group the barns on the, on the type of animals in them instead. For example, you could have a hog nursery in, in building one and two finisher barns as building two. In the last example, is one barn equals sever several buildings. So this example shows one large physical barn. Uh, and like the last example, group, it groups the rooms in buildings according to location or animal type. So here, actually, in the diagram, the diagram shows four buildings grouped by location, northwest, northeast, southwest, and southeast. 
So we'll go back to OmniSelect, and for this tutorial, we'll create two buildings. Building 1 and Building 2. If you're using phase-on wireless adapters to wirelessly connect to your devices, you'll have one labeled ECM and one or more labeled ES. Enter the addresses of the ES adapters in this screen. So click on Add Adapter and type in the address. <coughs> this address will be on the serial number label on the ES device. Once the devices that use the wireless adapters are added to the system in other screens, then they'll show up here on this list under Devices Using the Selected ES Adapter. Next we move to the Users tab. So in here you can manage all the users. Now for security purpose, Phazon recommends replacing the default sysadmin user with your own administrator user. So we'll just give an example of that if we put in a user name of Joe, click the administrator, <coughs> and put in a password. Okay, and these are these on the right hand side, the user permissions are automatically all checked because the administrator will have access to everything in the system. Now that we have another administrator uh, user, we can go to the sysadmin and actually just remove that all together. And if you want, you can always put that back in. There's always, the system it will never let you take out um, all the administrator users. There's always going to, there'll always have to be one in there. So the reason why we want to put in, in that, um, changing the user from a sysadmin to an actual person, it'll protect against unauthorized access. And, and it also provides an audit log for each user with changes when they, while, the, changes that they made while they logged in. Uh, so it's better to have um, all the users that will access this system to have their own name in there instead of everybody using the sysadmin. That way you can track who did what and when. Now for any users that don't have the administrator box checked, they won't have access to the configuration section of any of the modules. Now, and for any box in the user permission list on the right-hand side um, that is not checked, the user will only be able to view and not change anything in the settings section for that module. So we'll just give an example here. We'll put another user in here. Uh, we will not make him an administrator. And let's give him permissions to modify everything except ventilation. I'll put in a password. And there we've got user Tom, not administrator, so he won't have access to configuration and anything underneath there. Uh, he will have access to uh, settings and will only be able to modify anything under uh, all, all the modules except for ventilation. So he'll still be able to view all the reports in, in all the modules. Now in the backups tab, the select system automatically performs a complete backup containing all the settings, the configuration, and the report data. And those settings are in here. So you can change how and when and how often it performs a backup under the backup settings, and also how long to keep that backup. On the last thing, notify to save off-site. Here you can choose to have it post a reminder in the communication center to copy the backup file off the computer in case it crashes. So here it will automatically do a backup um, at these times and dates, uh, but it's up to you to make sure that you copy that backup file off-site to, to an external drive, preferably uh, like maybe a USB stick that you can take off-site in case something catastrophic happens in, uh, in the building. Uh, on the right-hand side here, we, sh we see where the, what time the last backup was made and when the next backup is scheduled to be run. So to save a backup to another location, like a removable uh, USB stick, you want to cl click the Save Backups button 
and then choose one of the backups to copy. So here we have a list of the backups that have been automatically generated, uh, listed by date. So what we do, we take the most recent one, we go Save As, and then we choose where we want to uh, copy that to. And if at any time you want to manually run a backup, you just click the Run Backup Now button. It should take uh, a minute or two to run, and a message will show up in the Communication Center when it's complete. And at that point, you'll also be able to access it through the Save Backups screen. The Settings section of the Site module contains the site and version information, like we saw in Configuration, uh, and a few other buttons here. It gives access to, um, to certain areas uh, for users that don't have configuration access, that, that don't have, basically don't have an administrator check on their user. Uh, so here we've got Start Test Bench Select, um, the Change Your Password, you can change your password without going into configuration, uh, Save Backups button, just another place to do that, and Open the Reports folder. So any reports that are generated, uh, there's just a shortcut button here to the Reports folder. Uh, 